Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Oko Koko. I know it's been a minute, but I'm actually excited to be back. And today we'll be looking at the Google Pixel Pro. Uh, now, I just wanna say that this is not a full in-depth review of this device. What I always like to do is to talk about a device and go through the specifications um, as a daily user would need it. Although I'm pretty used to tech and I'm pretty used to these devices, I always like to uh, tell on my video to those that just need to know what a device can do for them, how it works, if it works for them, if they should pay for it, if they should get one. Uh, I don't I don't go too in depth into my videos, so you will learn that about me. So without any further delays, let's get right into this review. So as always, Google does a great job in packaging their product. So the box came with a SIM card remover, a USB-C cable, a USB-C to a USB-A adapter, and a power brick. Oh, wait, wait, what? Well, I guess no power brick. Well, with less stuff in the box, I care a little bit less about the box, so let's dive right into this phone. So usually I'm always excited for all Google phones. I've actually owned almost every Google phone, and I should say that they've never really disappointed me uh, yet. But I'm a little bit less excited right now about this phone, and I'm gonna jump right into it. So first off, this phone is very beautiful. Beautiful to hold, beautiful to use, beautiful to look at. Uh, it weighs a little bit over seven pounds, cranked up with 12 gigs of RAM, the new Google Tensor chip that everybody's talking about right now, a 6.7 inch display with a crispy 120 hertz refresh rate, with a whopping 24-bit display and a hundred million colors. And yes, I cracked my screen already, but before you judge me, I can explain myself. I always take care of my phones. I always have my casing before I use my phones. I always have a screen protector on the phone. And the craziest thing about this phone is that I don't know how it cracked. I don't know when I dropped it. I don't even think I dropped it. And it's just crazy because this is supposed to be a top tier Gorilla Glass on the best phone that Google has, and I just don't know what happened. Maybe it fell like on a carpet in my house, but I never dropped this phone on like concrete, even wood. It shouldn't crack, it had a case. This is the, actually I'm not going to um, tell you guys who made the case, so I'm just going to leave that right there. Moving forward, this phone was carefully built, you can tell, uh, it's very comfortable to hold. Like I said, the buttons are carefully placed around the phone, as Google knows very well to do. The camera sits comfortably in the back. At first I was concerned about the little notch or the, the, the way the phone would sit on a flat surface with the camera kind of bulking out in the back, but I actually got used to it pretty quickly. The battery life on this phone is amazing. I'm not the kind of guy that travels with my phone for hours without charging them. So I can't really tell you if it goes five, six, 10 hours before it dies. All I know is that every time I need my battery, it's there. I charge my phone before I leave the house, in the car, wherever I am, I always charge my phone. While this charging works great, I mean, I cannot complain about the battery power of this device. Now let's talk about performance. With 12 gigs of RAM on this bad boy, this thing does not skip a beat. The 120 hertz refresh rate just takes this thing up a notch. Performance wise, this phone is buttery smooth. I've not had any lagging issues yet and I've used this phone over a month at this point. And I actually have to talk about the 5G radio on this phone. As you guys may know, I like to do internet speed tests on my phones every time I get them. Uh, so we're gonna do uh, a live test on this phone now and I'm just gonna make sure that my Wi-Fi is off. Uh, let's run straight data, pure data. I use T-Mobile in the US, so this is on a T-Mobile connection. You can see my boss right there. And uh, here we go, it's, um, oh, oh, okay. All right, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, the upload speed I'm not gonna uh, and uh, here's the upload all right whoa all right uh, you know what I uh, we're gonna do that test one more time just one more time you know the thing is that sometimes these phones sometimes some people may say it's a glitch uh, they might say it's just the network you might say it's whatever energy whatever you say 
Um, but let's okay. All right. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Easy. Easy in the three hundreds. Easy. All right. You know what? We are just gonna do just. All right, we're gonna do this one more time. One more time. Last time, last time. Let's get this out of the way. All right, here we go. Oh, come on, all right. So the other thing I wanna talk about is the fingerprint reader. Google came out with an on-screen fingerprint reader that got a lot of hate at the beginning. I should actually say that it did not really work well for me, but Google came out with an update a couple of weeks later that made it much better. As you can see, it's much faster. Before I couldn't get into my phone at all, I always had to use the pin to get into the phone, but right now it's much better. It, it could definitely be better, but it is much better than it was when it first came out. Last but not the least, the camera. So let me just break the news for you. If you haven't heard this already, just so you know, Google has the best camera. Yes, I said it. 11 megapixels in the front and 50 megapixels in the back. This is crazy on a camera. So as a professional photographer, I'm sure I'll never take this phone to do a professional gig or a professional product shot or anything like that. But I should say that as a regular phone user, this is just overkill, 50 megapixels. It's just ridiculous. I'm not, I'm not even trying to make my pictures come out nice. I'm not even putting efforts and you can see how crispy without editing or retouching, just how clear the photos look. For video, this shoots 4K 30 FPS in the front and 4K 60 in the rear. If you're looking for slow motion, you can do 240 FPS in the rear for 1080p. So final thoughts on this device. I miss the fingerprint reader in the back. When I first saw that it's an on-screen fingerprint reader, I did not love it. I wasn't excited. I knew exactly what that meant for me. I love the fingerprint reader in the back of the Pixel 5 XL. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, I have it on my channel. It couples as a pull down for the notification screen and that was super useful for me. And that fingerprint reader was fast. The on-screen finger reader, like I said before, it's not great. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it does. And again, it's better than it was when it first came out. I can deal with it, it's not a deal breaker for me, but I actually do miss the fingerprint reader on the Pixel 5 XL. And yes, another thing is how did my screen crack? It's really puzzling because I don't remember dropping my phone at all and the craziest thing is that it wasn't a phone case so for a phone to be in a phone case and it's still cracked and again it should be the best phone I don't know how I feel about that I'm going to fix it but I wanted to actually do this review with the cracked screen so you guys can see that that although it is told and said that the glass is durable that the glass is strong that the glass can withstand drops just be careful out there so whatever you do put a case on that phone and um, take care of your phone. So that's it for this review. I have a lot of devices that I'm currently reviewing right now and those videos should be up in the coming weeks and I cannot wait to share with you guys. But once again, if you're new on this channel, thank you, thank you for watching. If you like the content of this channel, please hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, make sure you like this video. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram and I'll see you on the next video.